Inside the Guild of Edelis, a wave of nervousness had swept over everyone. They were all anxious about Goku's situation, all except for one. Mini Wendy, who was calmly sipping her soda, Ada Wendy with worry etched on her face, turned to her mini version. Hey, mini me, aren't you worried about our self-proclaimed father? She asked. Mini Wendy put down her glass, looking at her adult version with a face that read, I don't understand why. The other guild members and Megaman were sweating, taken aback by Mini Wendy's carefree attitude. Noticing their reactions, she sighed and reassured them, There's no need to worry. He may not seem like it, but he's very strong, she said, taking another sip of her drink. How strong is he? Megaman asked. Curiosity peaked. All eyes were on Wendy as she responded, Well, I've never seen him fight with all his power, but if I had to put it in some way, not all of you together could cause him harm. Her confident response left everyone in doubt. They thought she was exaggerating, but her conviction made them wonder. Maybe it was true. As they pondered, Goku suddenly appeared, startling everyone. He was carrying two people, Lucy on one side and Natsu on his shoulder. Worried, Wendy approached Goku. What happened to them? She asked. They faced an opponent they couldn't defeat. And this is the result. Goku replied, his face stern. Seeing Natsu and Lucy seriously injured, Wendy felt helpless without her healing magic. Goku, noticing her distress, patted her head and reassured her. Don't worry about that. He then took out a couple of green seeds from his pocket, causing confusion among everyone. Mira quickly fetched the first aid kit. Use this to treat their wounds, she said, her face full of concern. Goku smiled a little, reminded of his world. Thank you, Mira, but it won't be necessary, he said, placing the seeds in the mouths of the injured. Natsu chewed and swallowed quickly, but Lucy was too weak. Goku had to put it in her mouth and force her to swallow which made all the girls blush. Seconds later, Natsu sprang up as if nothing had happened, followed by Lucy. When she opened her eyes, the first thing she saw was Goku's face. Still confused and thinking she was in the middle of a fight, she jumped back and assumed a fighting stance. But as she took in her surroundings, she began to relax. It seems that you are calmer now, Goku said. His voice now relaxed. Go, Goku? Lucy stuttered, not understanding the situation. Yes, Lucy, it's me. You can relax, Goku reassured her, a smile on his face. Seeing his smile, Lucy knew it wasn't a dream. The person in front of her was the real Goku, her Goku. Feeling safe, she let her guard down, and tears began to flow from her eyes. Goku slowly approached her, wrapped his arms around her, and whispered softly, you're safe now. Unable to contain herself any longer, she hugged Goku tightly, bursting into loud, uncontrollable sobs. Goku gently stroked her head as she cried for what seemed like an eternity. When her tears finally subsided, she sat down in a chair, but she didn't let go of Goku. She clung to him as if fearing he would disappear the moment she let go. Edo Lucy, who had been watching the scene, initially thought her counterpart was pathetic for such a display. But when she learned who Lucy had fought to end up in such a state, her impression changed. The word that came to mind was period, brave. With the atmosphere now calmer, Edo Lucy asked about the attacker. Hey, who was the one who left you in that state? She asked. Lucy looked at Goku and answered with a complicated expression. The guy who attacked me looked just like Goku, but his clothes were different. He carried a strange device that seemed to detect power and had a tail coiled around his waist, Lucy explained, her face filled with fear. Upon hearing this description, everyone stood up, their faces a mix of fear and surprise. Wendy and Lucy didn't understand everyone's strange reaction. Goku had a serious expression, and Megaman was completely lost. Do you know who that guy was? Lucy asked. The one who answered was Edo Wendy. That guy was a Saiyan, she replied. Wendy and Lucy were confused. They didn't know about the existence of the Saiyans, but the word seemed familiar. After a moment, Lucy remembered something. Isn't that name like Goku's Super Saiyan transformation? She asked. Upon hearing this, Everyone suddenly realized and turned to Goku for answers. He sighed resignedly and responded, It's just as you think. I'm a Saiyan. When he said this, everyone instinctively stepped back and went on guard. Wendy, who didn't understand anything, looked nervously between Goku and those on guard. But Lucy understood. Oh, that's why that guy looked just like you. She said as if she finally understood. That was your version from this world, right? That's right. That was Kakarado, who I was originally supposed to be. Goku replied. This confused everyone even more. They didn't understand what was happening. What do you mean by it's what you should be? 
Answer. Edo Lucy yelled. First of all, calm down everyone. As you can see, I'm not an enemy. On the contrary, I'm also part of the guild, and if you look closely, I don't have a tail, Goku told them. Everyone realized that if he were part of the Saiyans, he could have killed them at any time, but he hadn't. They relaxed, returned to their seats, and stared at Goku, waiting for an answer. Well, now that everyone is calmer I'll tell you my story, Goku began. He told them about how he arrived on Earth, lost his memories, and discovered the hard way that he was part of the warrior race called Saiyan. He also mentioned that he wasn't originally from the other world, and that he was from another world, but he didn't say why he was sent to that world. The room fell silent as Goku told his story. Everyone was so amazed that they were speechless, their mouths hanging open. But the silence was broken by Megaman, who was highly tense and excited. That's incredible. What an exciting story. That's how travelers from other worlds should be, not like the lazy Kazuma. She exclaimed excitedly. Everyone saw Megaman's reaction, and couldn't contain their laughter, which made her embarrassed, and she covered her face with her hat. With the atmosphere now returned to normal, Edo Lucy turned to Goku. So, what do you plan to do? She asked. Well, tomorrow afternoon I have to meet with them, Goku replied, surprising everyone. What are you saying? You're crazy. That's very dangerous. Edo Wendy yelled at him. Nah, from what I saw they are quite weak. And if it's a trap, then I just have to defeat them, and that's it. Goku replied nonchalantly. Edo Lucy approached her other self and asked, Is it always like this? The normal Lucy just smiled weakly and responded, Unfortunately, yes. Meanwhile, Natsu, who had been strangely quiet, noticed a person. After taking a good look at her, his eyes filled with tears, and he leapt towards her, shouting, Lasana. Hey, Nanatsu! She exclaimed in surprise. But Natsu was stopped by Elfman's hand. Hey, what do you think you're doing to Lasana? Elfman asked in an annoyed tone. But it's Lasana. Lasana! Natsu shouted back at Elfman, who just sighed. Already? I know what she's called. She's my sister, Elfman replied. Lasana ran out and when no one saw her, she leaned against the wall and covered her mouth with her hands while tears streamed down her face. It's, it's my Natsu, the Natsu from the other side. I'm very happy, really happy, but I can't tell him that I'm his Lasana. Not now since then look me. And Elniachin would be very sad. Lasana thought to herself crying. Meanwhile, Goku, noticing Natsu's quick movement, approached him, and gave him a blow to the head, which unintentionally plunged his head into the ground, leaving everyone surprised. I'm sorry hehehe, he, he laughed while rubbing the back of his neck, but Natsu, okay, you're making a fuss, if you want to talk to her, do it later since we'll stay here for a while. Natsu, even with his head buried, gave a thumbs up to Goku, in some town in Edelis? Toma arrived at the town where Bardock and his people were settled. Without wasting time, he went to the house where Bardock and his wife Jine were, since he had to report what happened with their youngest son as soon as possible. When he arrived at the house, he knocked on the door and a few moments later, Bardock's wife, Jine, opened it. The woman, young in appearance, was of medium height and slender complexion. She had a paler complexion, and her hair looked more similar to that of her son Raditz. She wore a pink combat armor highlighted in green and profiled in white, in addition to purple bracelets and white boots. Her armor also had a skirt of the same color, and her distinctive tail of the Saiyans. She greeted him with a kind smile. Hello Toma, yes it was fast, where is Kakarado? She asked, looking around for her youngest son. Toma, seeing her concern, replied, Jine, first of all I want to meet with Bardock. Seeing his serious expression, she asked, did something happen to Kakarado? Let's go in first, and then I'll tell you. He replied in a serious voice. Jine, seeing his seriousness, just nodded and let him in. Once inside, she and Toma went to the study where Bardock was. When they entered, they found not only Bardock, but also their eldest son Raditz, who was apparently consulting something with his father. When the two entered the study, Jine spoke to Bardock. Bardock, apparently Toma has something important to say about Kakarado, she told her husband. Bardock, upon hearing that, sighed with resignation and asked Toma, Toma, what did that stupid do this time? Raditz, hearing Bardock, chuckled under his breath since he knew that his little brother was a troublemaker. Toma looked at him with a serious face and told him, your son is dead, Bardock. The news was a great shock to the family. Bardock was left with his face frozen looking at Toma. Jine covered her face while crying loudly, and Raditz's face was full of fury as he clenched his fists in anger. 
Bardock was the first to ask, while still assimilating what was said, Toma, who was responsible? Well, it's something that's hard to believe even if I tell you, he replied. Raditz, exploding in fury, yelled at Toma, who the fuck was the one who killed my brother? Was it a follower of King Vegeta or was he a laggard? In any case, he's a dead man? It wasn't any of those, he replied. Toma if you know it, say it now, my patience is running out, Bardock said, his face full of murderous intent. Toma sighed and replied, the one who killed your son, it was Kakarado himself. Both Bardock, Jine, and Raditz stared at Toma as if they didn't understand anything. Do you mean that he committed suicide? Jine asked. No, Jine. What I want to say is that the one who killed Kakarado was Kakarado himself, he replied. Toma, stop with the confusing talk, and get to the point, Bardock replied. Already very tired. The one who killed your son, as I said, was your own son. But this one is from the other side, and calls himself son Goku, Toma replied. That surprised the three who didn't expect that answer. Do you mean that son Goku is really my son? Bardock asked. There is no doubt, since when I told him Kakarado, he answered me that he didn't like that name, and that he told him son Goku, Toma replied. Jine, who didn't understand anything, just said, does my son kill my son? How confusing. Toma, seeing the confusion of the family, told them, soon you will see it with your own eyes, since tomorrow I will meet with him, and I plan to bring him so that you can check it yourself. Bardock, upon hearing that, put on a very sinister face, and said, it's okay, Tomorrow I'll check if he's really Kakarado, and I'll ask him why he did it, but according to his answer, he may kill him. It seems that tomorrow's meeting between Goku and his Saiyan family will be quite eventful, and he still doesn't even know it. 